Shallow Grave is a 1994 thriller and dark comedy directed by Danny Boyle. It is the story of three friends whose fourth roommate dies, leaving a suitcase full of cash behind. Instead of calling the cops, they eventually decide to dispose of the body themselves so they can keep all the cash. Needless to say, things quickly spiral out of control. The story bears many similarities to and was probably inspired by the partner's tale in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. In it, three friends, saddened by the death of a fourth friend, decide to find death in order to kill death himself. Instead of finding death, they find a lot of money at the foot of a tree and decide to guard it until morning. They draw straws to decide who will fetch food and wine while the other two wait. Two of the friends end up murdering the wine fetcher in order to keep all the money for themselves, and while they're at it, drink some wine. Unfortunately, the third friend had the same idea and had poisoned the wine. Yep, everybody dies. Although not all three friends die in shallow grave, they definitely all have a brush with death. Like the partner's tale, Shallow Grave is concerned with questions of morality, though the way it answers them is a tad unconventional, almost like an updated take on the old story. Towards the end of the film, we start to believe that Alex finally learns to care about his own safety and Juliet's safety more than the money, but we quickly find out, in a twist of sorts, that Alex had the money stashed away all along. The slightly surreal ending led many people to speculate that Alex is actually dead, but apparently the director commented that he is in fact meant to be alive at the end. They even added this line Hello, Inspector. in post-production to emphasize the point. The way Alex laughs at the end is unsettling because he's so happy about the money despite one of his friends being dead and the other being a wanted criminal. The opening voiceover of the film warns that trust and friendship are the things that truly matter in life, but are they really? The ending certainly leaves it morally ambiguous, as Alex seems to get a brighter future, not because he does the right thing, but because he's clever and lucky enough to get away with it. When deciding whether or not to take the money, Juliet hesitates, saying it's unfeasible, and David asks, don't you mean immoral? This, I believe, is the thematic question of the film. Does morality have any sway in the world, or are we all ruled by what's feasible? meaning we'll do it as long as we can get away with it. Julie, the doctor, initially adopts the most cynical viewpoint and becomes an antagonist after the gang members are killed. Her merciless behavior is humorously addressed by this line. But Julia, you're a doctor, you kill people every day. David, the accountant, is the most careful and morally conscious of the bunch, as if he has to account for every single factor. He's also the most guilt-ridden one initially, but he eventually breaks and becomes remorseless, completing a huge character arc. Alex serves as his foil, transforming in the opposite direction, starting off as a reckless, almost bloodthirsty opportunist and gaining more of a conscience throughout the film. Interestingly, as a journalist, all he needed was to shift his perspective a little in order to become sickened by the crimes he once was eager to commit. The title, Shallow Grave, refers to the literal shallowness of the grave they dug, which leads to the discovery of the corpses, their ultimate downfall, as well as the figurative shallowness, the superficiality of greed, and its propensity for wrecking perfectly good lives. The beginning of the film establishes the three as fairly well off, with even enviable living conditions. Alex mainly wants to buy unnecessary items, including an expensive watch that almost gets him found out. Furthermore, the qualities he's looking for in a prospective roommate are presence, charisma, style, and charm. Nothing about being safe or responsible. Far from being pillars of morality before discovering the cash, the cross-examination scenes establish the roommates as less than savory people. They taunt the prospective roommates rather cruelly, simply because they can. When Juliet meets Hugo for the first time, he mentions that he's writing a novel about a priest who dies, perhaps representing the death of moral authority within the modern day world. Julia even refers to the human condition as a weakness that needs to be treated. The film obviously explores the human weaknesses that are greed and the thirst for power, echoed further when David says, Victory is the same as defeat. It's giving into destructive competitive urges. Oh, did you learn that in your psychotherapy group, David? The preoccupation with power is revealed in the very first scene and is emphasized by the camera angles and composition. 
The roommate applicants, having no power, are fully entrapped within the frame at a neutral angle. The friends, on the other hand, are shot in low angle, giving the sense that they're looming over the audience. A higher position is associated with having more power, a visual motif that recurs throughout the film. When Cameron shifts from being the victim to eventually becoming the aggressor, it's accompanied by a high angle shot of Alex. Similarly, the thugs are always shot in low angle, emphasizing the fact that they take their power by force, that is, until David defeats them. One extreme low angle shot of the thugs follows immediately after the low angle shot of Juliet, almost like a match cut, drawing a visual connection between the thugs' amorality and that of Juliet. As well, it represents Juliet's sexual power over Alex, which comes into play towards the end of the film as it leads to Alex risking his life to protect her. Her shoe takes on a sexual meaning in this scene, but later becomes a tool of violence when she decides to take all the money. This parallels with how Juliet uses her sexuality as a tool throughout the film, simply a means to get more power. This is not really related to gender, as Alex says. Oh, don't worry. I'd do exactly the same thing, only I don't think I'm his type. Plus, upon seeing money, Alex smells it and Juliet licks her lips, emphasizing the relationship between sex and power. When David descends, or rather ascends, to madness, he decides to stay in the loft. The higher vantage point makes him feel more in control, plus he can spy on his roommates from above. The aerial shot is used sparingly in Shallow Grave and is related to the theme of guilt and judgment. One of the first aerial shots, as if from God's point of view, shows the friends transporting Hugo's body, an act everyone feels ambivalent about. One area in which aerial shots are frequently used is the staircase, another physical representation of power. Being on the top floor, David is able to hear about a robbery on the floor below and look upon it as a spectator. In contrast, the floors beneath him are totally oblivious to the decaying corpse above and its subsequent transport. The skylight on the ceiling looks very much like an eye, which is another visual motif solidified by the same rotating camera movement in the shot of the ceiling and the shots of David's eyes. David is the most morally conscious of the group and thus quickly becomes plagued by guilt, even before there are any signs that they will be caught. In a fit of paranoia, he decides to move into the loft, which is a clever way to externalize the unseen and maybe unfelt guilt of the other two roommates. In any case, they too become paranoid in their own home. The power dynamics come full circle towards the end of the movie when the detectives get on their case. They take the roommate's position in the beginning of the film, while the roommates take the vulnerable position of the applicants. The judges become the judged, except now the questions are a bit more serious than what kind of music do you like? In the end, it's up to the audience to decide if Alex is smiling because of the money or simply because he's alive. Thank you.